Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the current iteration of Sasquatch Speaks. I have no idea what episode this is. I'll figure that out in post. Um, I wanted to just kind of stop in real quick and make a quick video, partially because it's been a while since I've done one with just myself, and also because of the ones that I've been making with other people. I kind of wanted to keep up a regular um, upload schedule, even though my podcasting partner, Masters is currently away on vacation in Disney World without me. I'm sure he's having a great time. Maybe. I don't know. He's been giving me a couple of messages on Discord about uh, being surrounded by children and things like that, which is not something that I would find to be particularly enjoyable or pleasant, but, you know, to each their own. Everyone gets to make their own, their own decisions on that one. Um. But uh, he, he did say I sent out a thing on Discord, by the way, I have a just updated my stuff down below, um, took out beam mixer, whatever it is, since mixer is now off the air um, permanently and uh, updated it so that you can all also follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Um, I put out a thing on Discord uh, yesterday to see who if anyone had any thoughts or ideas or topics or things they wanted me to address in this. And the only people who responded were masters and Sasquatch. Um, so you know how that goes. And, and masters was saying that he wanted me to, uh, um, say how much I missed him and, and I do miss him, but not as much as I'm going to miss him in about three and a half hours when our typical Sunday night D and D game would be starting. And because he's in Disney, he won't be here to to run that. The, the DM is kind of important. The rest of us can kind of take a week off, but uh, you know the DM is rather important for for a successful D and D game. Uh, and I also want to talk with him about some things for that, but that's a whole other story because it's, that's that's a different topic for another time with him. Not that y'all aren't great and amazing, but uh, I need some feedback on some ideas I'm having because. In that regard, I'm getting close to the point where I think the character I've been playing for about the last two and a half to three months, which I really, really like, um, I think his run is about done. <laughs> he is uh, coming to a story point that I don't see a smooth transition past. And uh, yeah, that could be a bit of a problem. I have a couple thoughts on what I could do to either try and save him or to replace him with someone else. Uh, but I want to run those past masters before I, you know, pull that up. But that'll be another topic for another time with him. Uh, thank you all for stopping in, listening. Probably not at all to anything past about uh, 30 seconds in. That's usually about how long I can maintain a, a listening audience. Um, but I appreciate your attentiveness for even that brief period of time. Although you're not here to hear my thankfulness for that. Anyway, yep. Thank you all for, for that. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, so yes, Masters, I do miss you. You are uh, absolutely integral to a part of my week, which I have become to be very, very thankful for and I look forward to and um, am trying not to be difficult with the rest of the members of the party, although it's very difficult to do that without giving away the whole farm. And I kind of want some parts of my stuff to be a secret still. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Sass says I should talk about our last family reunion. For those of you who don't know, Sasquatch is Sasquatch 1985. The, the one viewer for the, uh, other things podcast is, uh, is, is my cousin. We are Sasquatches and fur. Um, and, uh, he knows very well. I can't believe you're trying to bring this up, Sass, that our family reunion this year was canceled due to COVID. Now, as of yet, coronavirus has not been able to jump to Sasquatches. I dare you to prove me wrong on that, anybody. But, for whatever reason, all the lockdown stuff is still applying to all the Sasquatches. And that's just discriminatory by my estimation, because we have immunity <clears throat> so far. So, anyway, we were not able to have the proper family reunion. So somebody, I'm still not entirely sure who, decided it was a really good idea for us to have our Sasquatch family reunion via Zoom. And fuzzy picture does not begin to 
describe what happened. I mean, you have to understand, we're all kind of a, 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 a furry group to begin with. And, and, and when you take that to the next level of all of us showing up on Zoom, of course, nobody paid for the free version. So we had to have like multiple iterations of this because we're a bunch of cheap people too. Um, so every 40 minutes where our Zoom meeting is getting knocked off, of course, we didn't do discord or anything else civilized like an intelligent human well i guess you know human being haha <laughs> the lesser species um but but like civilized people of course he wouldn't do that so we all get on zoom and we're you know bumping a trying to restart a meeting every 40 minutes and varying generations are trying to interact with this technology and and it just doesn't work out i mean there are some people who are part of our group who think that they know what they're doing and they, they clearly don't. For instance, my uh, you, you, granny Sasquatch, she pointed out that there was this lovely bird on the ledge behind her and she kind of pointed out the window and Uncle Jerry turned around to see where it was, despite the fact that he was nowhere near her and was just watching online. He just assumed that her her bird was visible from his house as well. And it just, it you know dealing with with people who are not tech savvy and you are tech savvy in a tech environment if you're in any other other situation it's fine as long as tech doesn't enter the problem and it doesn't enter the picture but when it does when you start trying to interact with non-tech savvy folk regarding technology the whole thing falls apart very very quickly and those of us who are not particularly tech savvy but just more than they are it becomes kind of like a head banging against the wall repeatedly trying to induce unconsciousness as quickly as possible uh, to avoid the social interaction. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that becomes a bit of an issue uh, very, very quickly. And, and, and so our family reunion, suffice it to say, was a complete fiasco because tech was involved. And, and in general, to be fair, Sasquatches are not particularly a tech-savvy group across the board. Some of us are exceptions. Most of us aren't. And uh, not being able to have the fur pile or anything else just kind of really just took away from the specialness of the event. So, uh, but I mean, you can't have a fur pile and be socially distant in any way, shape or form. So we're just going to pass that off and we're going to move past this for now. I hate you, Sass, for doing this. And I hate myself for saying that I would. I should just go back and edit my comment on discord so i don't have to include this but i i'm not going to do that um but i said i would answer them all as best as i can so i i have done that i've done that i'm now we're moving on we are not redressing sasquatch family reunion 2020 ever again 2020 is just the worst year ever 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 it's there is like i i've had some bad years before i've been sick for years i've been asleep for years i've done, i've had all kinds of things happen that should never happen to people 2020 is the worst let's just all agree on that 2020 is terrible and let's 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 i think that that is a unifying statement a time of great division we can all mutually agree that 2020 is just crap let's let's start new I know we can't do it right now. It takes a little bit of preparation, but let's let's bump up the calendar a little bit. January first, we're gonna skip that. We're gonna we're gonna skip straight to that. August the first is now January first. We'll be in twenty twenty one. We'll all be good. We'll just call it the year that was half there, and life will be wonderful again. <laughs> oh my word, this is just unbelievable. Anyway, try and get back to something positive. Um, my, my next topic comes from Masters. Again, these are the only two people who are responding to me, but, you know, kind of a dead Discord server. Maybe we can get that back up and running now that um, I'm trying to be more out there again. Um, he says that uh, I should try to convince someone that has never liked Star Wars to like Star Wars. And for reference, uh, he is someone who likes Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Well, that's, uh, that's a tough one, but not really. Um, I don't really know that much about the Harry Potter universe. I never read the books. I've watched, I think one of the movies. And when I say, I think I watched one of the movies, that means I definitely did not watch that movie at all. Uh, I may have seen like 10 minutes, one time of, uh, chamber of secrets or something. I don't know. 
Um, I don't, I, I really don't know. And I don't know all that much about, um, fantastic beasts and where to find them. However, there are a couple of common, common story points that I think, uh, not just story points, but like world building points that would probably correlate very well between the two. Someone who doesn't like star Wars, um, but does like the Harry Potter universe. Uh, I don't know what the difference would be in terms of their, it might just be come down to simple characterization at that point, because if they like Harry Potter, then they probably also like, you know, supernatural powers and things like that. And they're very much into that fantasy aspect. Well, Star Wars, as much as some people try to say otherwise, for years I did. And then I heard William Shatner's take on it. And I just don't disagree with William Shatner on just about anything because it doesn't seem like it's going to go very well for me. He pointed out that Star Wars is not, in fact, science fiction. Star Wars is science fantasy because they invent things in that world to make things work according to the story that have no basis in science or something that can be properly tested. Now, I know that George Lucas tried to retcon that a little bit in the, in the prequels with the midichlorians and everything else about being behind the force. But ultimately, that is just a MacGuffin to try and explain something that didn't really even need to be explained. You can just say the force is magic and everyone buys it because it's cool. So I will say for straight up, if your thing about Star Wars not liking the force, the force is magic. It's cool. Deal with it. It, it. It's no different than, you know, trying to reason your mind, you know, saying, you know, when God, you live, you saw or whatever else it is. I don't again. I only saw the memes. I don't know what the any of the things are. So um, as a non Harry Potter per person, if. The magic in Harry Potter is not an issue for you for liking it. I don't see a problem there. Um, if you're someone who is very, he's a fantastic beast even. So it's not really even that you are someone who's a Harry Potter fan. You are someone who likes the creature aspect of Harry Potter. Hey, Star Wars has you covered. You don't just have fantastic creatures and fantastic beasts. You have fantastic creatures and beasts that are intelligent and can interact with people on a much deeper level than just, is this a threat or not? Or can I make this my pet? That's kind of the D&D &D take on things. Not necessarily what's going to happen in, in Star Wars. Star Wars, some of the most outlandish creatures possible are, are intelligent. In the Star Wars uh, Rebel series, they, I think that's the last season, they encounter the creature Bendu. And Bendu is this mountainous individual who basically makes himself incorporeal through the power of the Force. Super cool, amazing creature design. Great, but he also brings a lot to the story in that he helps the characters to develop and to realize who they are. And of course, he's also an intelligent being. If you're looking for some, for, for just cool creature designs, Star Wars has you all over the place, whether it's, it is the, the beasts that are coming, you're not sure what to do with them, like the Rancor or the, um, the Great Dragon, anything like that. There's so many cool beasts and, and creatures in throughout all of Star Wars that meet, that meet that criteria. Some of them are just threats. Some of them can be made into pets. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it works. Threats and pets. <laughs> Ooh, that could be a real, that could be a good idea for like a D and D campaign. I've been having a lot of D and D in the mind recently, and that just seems to me to be a really cool thing. Uh, like a, a threats and pets campaign where everybody's a ranger and you're just trying to figure out which ones you can tame or which one you can't going to get off that, but that's a cool idea. Um, um, that's a really, uh, actually, that would just kind of be, that'd be being, that'd basically just be playing Pokemon in D and D take it back. That's a bad idea. <laughs> well, not a bad idea, but it's an interesting idea and probably not one that I can ever pull off because I'm, uh, yeah, my, my DMing has not gone particularly well. I tend to put things at such a level that all the people die very quickly. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's what it is, what it is, it's what it is right? Um, anyway, so. Yeah, the, um, I, if it's the if it's the beast that you like, if it's the if it's the the gigantic or the even the very very small, there are some very very tiny little little organisms that, that appear throughout all of Star Wars, like loth cats and and a bunch of other things that are that are, that are cute, that are cuddly. You can make them pets. Um, I don't see any reason why that would be a hindrance to you. Um, if it's the overall story, I mean. I don't see, I haven't seen them, I haven't read them, but I don't really see how you could look at anything like the bad guys in either Fantastic Beasts or in Harry Potter that doesn't pull a lot of 
very strong influence from Darth Vader, from Emperor Palpatine. There's a lot of parallels that are drawn between them. There's a big bad evil guy, and you're against him. I mean, yeah, there's there's some there's some things that are in Star Wars a little bit more nuanced, like you know, Star Wars in Star Wars, Darth Vader is Luke's father, and Luke is supposed to be the hero, and we don't know how that's going to play out necessarily bunch of really cool things about how Luke kind of walks that line in episode six between the light and the dark and all kinds of things. But um, that's a, that's a, that's a very in-depth topic that I don't want to get into right now because it's not pertinent or germane to the topic at hand. But with that being the case, I think it's, it's fair to say that, that even the story beats match up a lot. You have a wizened, um, you know, uh, mentor person who dies partway through uh, by one he is killed by one of his students. It sounds a lot. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of parallels going on back and forth here. Um, so I don't I don't I don't see any, any reason why that would be an issue. Some of the characterizations. This is where I just kind of drop out of the conversation because I have practically no information whatsoever on any characterization of any Harry Potter character whatsoever. And you know what? If it is just down to characterization, I think you should still give Star Wars a try. Maybe not the Star Wars sequels. I'm going to be honest. We've talked before. I'm going to, not going to get angry about this this time. But I'm going to point out, Star Wars sequels, probably not the best storyline, probably not the best characters, probably not the best general general processing of, of the given source material. But if you go to the source, if you go to that original trilogy, you can find a lot of, of very deep, moving, well thought out, well acted, well portrayed characters, and, and and there are story arcs for each of them. There you can see how logically they would start at point A and then arrive at point B by the end of the third film. There's a lot of just very, very intelligent things and decisions that are made throughout the Star Wars original trilogy, and even in this in the prequel trilogy, of which I've become a bit of a an apologist for in the past couple of years. Um, because I've started to really appreciate them in a, in a, in a dark, in a deeper sense. Again, the prequel trilogy is not the prequel. The sequel trilogy has some issues, a lot of issues that I will not get into. Um, I think there's a lot of material there that could have been much more effectively utilized and was not. Um, and so I won't, I won't really launch a defense of those because if that there, the problem is that people tend to base their perception of things based their opinion of things on the most readily available version of that thing and in the past couple of years the most readily available version of star wars has been the sequel trilogy which if that is your first introduction to star wars i feel very very sorry for you because that is not how that's not how that's not how you should be interpreting all things star wars i think that that may actually be not knowing anything more about the situation, but that sounds to me, that feels to me like that might be more the case. Like they've only been introduced to this sequel, sequelized, you know, very Hollywood-esque version of Star Wars, which has no real substance. Um, that's probably the best word. It, it, it doesn't really have anything tying it or holding it together. You know, the force is all around us and it moves within us and it lives, it, you know, it binds the galaxy together. Well, the... Sequel trilogy doesn't have that. Not very much. The Force Awakens. No, it did kind of stay asleep, and it's still asleep at this point. Um, if you want to have your first interact, if you're okay to having your first interaction with Star Wars being something that's not really Force heavy, watch The Mandalorian. Mandalorian is solid Star Wars. Also, the animated shows. Not, not, uh, whatever it is. Uh, well, not Star Wars Resistance or whatever. Else. That's it's not so solid. That's, uh, it's not the worst. Well, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it not being the worst. I'm not sure what is worse, but I'm going to stick with it not being the worst. Episode eight might be worse. Episode eight might, might definitely be worse. I feel, I feel more strongly about episode eight. I think because they're actually, yeah, I feel more strongly that episode eight is the worst. So, but, um, Star Wars resistance is not particularly engaging. The characters aren't interesting. They're boring. They are very cliche. They do all the same tropes that every other character in every other show could possibly do and make mistakes and try to pretend like they're having character development when they're just going to do the exact same thing in the next episode anyway. But that's a whole other story. Um, if you want to make good Star Wars shows be your first entrance, 
Uh, Clone Wars is fantastic. Star Wars uh, Rebels is also fantastic. And really a, just a great through line between going from Clone Wars into Rebels. Um, if you want a very, very, very deep, in-depth um, and, and just very rich story, watch from Clone Wars all the way through to the end of Rebels. You will be taken on an emotional roller coaster that I think most other shows, except maybe Avatar The Last Airbender, would have a lot of difficulty taking you on. So if it's characters, there are characters in Star Wars that you can love. You can love Ahsoka Tano. You can love... Well, I don't know if you can love Anakin Skywalker. You can appreciate some of the decisions that he makes in the shows. In the movies, he's kind of meh. But in the shows, he's pretty decent. Um, he, he Although he does kind of just play an archetype of himself, not really the full... I would I would like to see a fully realized bad guy, but that is not a kid's thing. Um, that's that's not going to be in a kid's show. Although there is an argument made that some parts of uh, both Rebels and Clone Wars are not made for kids. That's the whole of the story itself, but uh, something that should be noted. Um, I know they are kids shows, but some parts, if you think about what you're seeing in front of you for more than you know half a second, you realize that this is not a show for kids. That is not a thing the kids should see. I'm going to leave that where it lies. Um, let's see. Uh, there is a there's a fantastic story. There's fantastic characterizations. Obi Wan Kenobi is probably the greatest archetype of the. Obi Wan Kenobi is cool because we know of the archetype of the wise and elder, the mentor, the one who sets the hero out on his hero's journey, who guides him along the way. He's Gandalf. He's um, uh, he's Aslan. He's all these wonderful things to, to be, you know, just, just show up and be like, I'm the one who's going to impel you on this journey. And that, and that's who Obi-Wan Kenobi is. But with the, but with Star Wars, because we get the, the prequels and because we get Star Wars Rebels, not Rebels, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, we also get a peek behind the curtain to see how that person comes to be who he is because we catch him right at the end of his training to become a Jedi Knight. So he's very, very young and we get to see him grow up and really become a fully realized, uh, not just Jedi, but a full a full adult and to see the decisions and the sacrifices that he has to make along the way to become more a part of the universe in which he resides because we can't, people can't just reside in the same place mentally as they always have and that's when people do that we say there's something wrong with them that's one of the reasons why a lot of stuff is still illegal in terms of you know bodily consumption because we've determined that it does actually stunt the mental growth of the person that's why alcohol is not supposed to be consumed by people who are under the age of 21 because we've noticed that if people consume it too early it starts to stunt the growth of their mind well in a society that requires functioning adults we need people who are of age to be functioning like adults. I'm sorry. It's tough. Get over it. There's a reason why some of these restrictions are in place. That's one of them. And so when we get to see that progression of someone who we already regard, at least people who are fans of Star Wars, the original trilogy and all this kind of stuff, who are fans of the character Obi-Wan Kenobi, this wise and guru of, you know, the force and everything else and, you know, how to live your life as a Jedi and an upstanding individual. When we see that person, but we get to go through the story with them to understand how they got to that point, how they be, were able to command that much respect, that is very cool. That's something I don't think any other any other show, any other property can really claim to have, to have a backstory for the person who is the wizened mentor, which is a very, very cool thing. If, if for no other reason, I think you should give Star Wars a chance just to be able to engage with that archetype on a much more deep and meaningful level. Because people don't get to that point. People don't become people that you respect. They don't become mentors simply by happenstance. They do so because they have given up a tremendous amount of things along the way. And Obi-Wan Kenobi most definitely did. And the story and the things that he gives up along the way are definitely worth the time to interact with and to learn about. Also, um, actually, you know what? I think that I think that about covers it. If anyone is going to learn, if anyone is going to appreciate Star Wars, you should you should appreciate it from the from the who does not currently. You should approach it from the aspect that it can really teach you some lessons about life because all people, I believe, should have some sort of mentor in their life. 
And that being the case, if you can understand that the people that you would normally go to for mentorship would not be there without something to shore them up, it can really help you just refine your decision as to who you go to at some point to become your mentor. Because then you can go in with eyes wide open knowing, okay, this person is here and this is how they got here. Not just because, you know, they're the closest person to me, but because they're someone who has genuinely lived their life in such a way that they have something positive and something helpful to be able to impart to other people. In this case, you. Um, I think that, and this goes kind of into my broader philosophy that I brought up with Masters, I think, on our last episode, that although Star Wars and Fantastic Beasts and all this kind of stuff, whatever it is, is put out there as entertainment and as a means for us to just, you know, it's intent, it's general intention is probably just to, you know, placate the masses. But if we can engage with it on a deeper level and we can start to break down the archetypes of the things that we're looking, there's a lot about life that can be learned by looking deeply into the representations of it that we create. Art imitates life. And by converse, life imitates art. It goes back and forth. You cannot have one without the other. And so, if we can read into the archetypes and the deeper things that are available to us to understand within the frameworks of our favorite fictions, we can come to perhaps a better understanding of who we are as a people or more specifically as an individual. Not necessarily who we are, but who we might become because we should always be growing. We should always be striving for better things. And if we can get ourselves into such a place that we can put ourselves in a headspace at least, that we can see who we want to be. Not who we are, but who we want to be. We can then plot a journey to that place. And investing ourselves, investing some time into discovering more about, you know, how some fictional character went from being one thing to becoming something else, that can very much help influence our lives as well, I believe. Uh, there's a, a, a TV show that's now now gone i think it was only on for two seasons it was called um who wants to be a superhero it was on the sci-fi channel it was run by it, like it was all stanley's brainchild it was just random people who basically were cosplayers and they show up and stanley was going to help them become a superhero and it got to the end of the first season and the end of the first season there was one guy who won um, his name was, I forget what his actual name was, but his character's name was Feedback. And he gives this impassioned, tearful speech at the end of it, that fully acknowledging in his own speech that it was corny and it was childish and all this kind of stuff. But it legitimately meant something to him to say that growing up reading Stan Lee's comic books and, and, and connecting with the characters of Spider-Man and, and the Fantastic Four and the X-Men really helped to mold and shape him into a better human being because he was a person who was raised without a strong moral model. He was a person who was raised without a mentor. It was something that he had to seek out later on in life and was fortunate enough to find, but until that point, he had to find something else to fill that void. And he was able to use, to use the surrogate of comic book characters to fill that void and to become a better person by interacting with a fictional character, which is amazing. That is a fantastic thing to do. If you can find something that you can connect with on such a level that will genuinely and positively impact your life to a better, to, to a, to, to make you a better person, that's amazing. But it requires more than just blankly consuming the product in front of you it requires actively engaging with it. And that I think is maybe also part of the problem. If this person is, you know, very much into one thing, but not another, I think that that now maybe they, they're, I have difficulty not seeing interest in star Wars. I have heard that there are people, I have met people who say that they do not like it. I don't understand any of the reasoning behind it. I don't understand why they would say that, but that is the way that things are. This being the case, I, you know, I, I have some, pre-existing um uh what do you call it some, some pre-existing um biases and uh and that being the case it is incumbent upon me to remember that not all people are going to have the same mentality as i do but i think that there is definitely something that can be learned from just about anything that you might be able to put in front of you now not all the things that there's a there's a great um saying i forget who said it 
but it was, if you cannot be a sterling example, become a firm warning. Um, and I've known people like this who live their life in such a way that you are never going to be able to hold them up as a pinnacle of what someone should be. But they realized that somewhere along the line and they held themselves up as a warning to people to say, don't become like me. My own uncle was very much like that. And I, 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 I laud him for take, for having the presence of mind to sit me down on a couple of instances and say, Gabby, take a look at me and then never become like me. And, 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 and those are his words. Those are exactly his words. And not necessarily that they were all, that he was all bad, but that there were certain aspects of his personality, of his actions, of his, of just who he was as a person, which were less than preferable. But he was conscious of that. And then he made, and then he took steps to make it obvious to the next generation that he was not someone to be emulated. And that, that made a huge difference and an impact on me. And perhaps that was also one of the things that helps to, to shape my framework and how I approach works of fiction. Because I've said, before, I've said very often that I will watch just about anything one time, but I'll only watch good things twice. Because some things you learn very quickly from them on the first viewing, it, the only thing to learn from them is that you don't want to watch them again. <laughs> I mean, that, that, is, that, is, that is a fair thing to say. And, and perhaps Star Wars is like that for some people. You can watch it one time and then you never want to see it again. Okay, I, I guess I understand. Because I have things like that as well. And I have some things like that as well that that are things that other people very much enjoy. But even if that is the case, seeing it through one time and trying to really engage with what you see on screen may be the difference between simply saying you dislike it versus being able to come to an appreciation for what it is. There are things that I have seen which I can honestly say I do not ever want to see that again. And not just because it was bad. It may have even been, in fact, precisely for this, in, this instance, things that I have seen before that I never want to see again. But I can appreciate why they are important, why some people like them. Um, this is a, this is admitting, admitting a lot here about myself, but uh, one, of those, one of those movies is called Natural Born Killers. And it is a movie which is written but not directed by Quentin Tarantino. Quentin, Quentin Tarantino uh, tends to have for some very violent films. And this would definitely be one of his most violent ever had he directed it. It's one of the most violent ones he written, he's, he's ever written, that's for sure. And that's actually saying a lot for him. Um, but the entire thing is written and is, is directed in such a way that it's trying to portray to the viewer what it might be like to live inside the mind of a deranged psychopath. And the director did a fantastic job of conveying that. And the message was well received. Hey, these are not people that you ever want to be like. These are traits and things and backgrounds and, and interactions that they have that you would want to avoid at all possible opportunities. And you can learn that in one viewing. And I can also learn from that in one viewing that although I appreciate the message that is being presented, I never want to see that again, ever. I would be very happy if I went the rest of my life without ever seeing that movie again. And it's entirely possible because I don't know a lot of other people who really like hold it up there as being like, oh, I want to see this one right now. Yeah, it's 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 very rough. It's very jarring. The almost the entire film is shot at an, at an offset angle, a, a Dutch angle for for those who are film students. Um, and you're just like. Man, I just, I just, you feel almost nauseous watching it just because of the filming angles and some of the lighting on it and the quick frenetic movement. And it's just not a pleasant movie to watch. But I will admit it is a very well-made film. So I can appreciate it without ever wanting to engage with it again. Perhaps that is what's missing here. Perhaps the person who is not a Star Wars fan has just never really come to a place where they could appreciate it for what it is they've never given it the time they've never given it the opportunity they just said well i guess i don't like that or i've never seen it before and i don't want to get involved with it that's also a, a, a fair point perhaps you just don't feel it there's place for it in your life and i guess that's a that's a fair point as well i i know i there are some fandoms that have come up 
as a possible thing that I could engage with over the years that I have not, um, particularly because I didn't feel I had time. There's time was very much into anime and things like that. And um, I never got into some of the biggest series out there because they had three to 400 episodes. I'm like, well, I just don't have the kind of time necessary to invest in watching three or 400 episode long series. And I think that that's fair. But for the short period of time that it takes to watch through Star Wars, I think that that is a fair enough. I, I think that that is something that could be reasonably requested of someone who just says that they don't like it, perhaps without ever having given it a shot. Um, and I know I mentioned this earlier, but I suppose I should mention it again, since it was also brought up by Masters. Um, that he wanted me to give my expectations for the last Airbender live adaptation, which is coming to Netflix. Um, I don't really know anything about it. I don't know anything about casting, directors, or anything like that. I am, it's another one of those things that I'm prepared to walk into with eyes wide open, um, with, without eyes wide open, but completely in the dark. I am trying to give it as clear a passage as possible without engaging with it in any way, shape or form until such time as it becomes fully available. And then I will engage with it. And if it is good, I will go to the second episode. <laughs> um, I am trying to avoid it as much as possible. I've heard, I have heard a couple things, um, some things that they're potentially leaving out, which I liked, some things that they're potentially including, which I don't think I will like. Um, but I'm trying to stay out of it as much as possible because, because I want, I want, uh, no one ever sits down or no one should ever sit down to watch something with the expectation or the intention to not like it. I went into every single, I mean, and I, I have made it quite clear on the other things, podcasts and multiple other places that I went into every single star Wars movie, a sequel movie with the expectation that I was going to like it or the expect or the clear expectation that I was just going to let it do what it would. Um, Again, trying to limit my exposure to it as much as possible. That being said, there are some things you just cannot cover up once you're in. The, once you're there in the fact, you sh you should always try to enter with an open mind, and and I think that really really helps with not again not just with with interacting with media but with other people. We're in a time right now where prejudice is an all time high on every possible level for every possible reason in every possible direction. I try not to do that. Every single person has the ability to be, has the potential to be good. And so I approach people with that same expectation. If I meet you for the first time, I expect that you will be a good person and I will allow you to prove me wrong down the road. But at the start, I have I want to give every single person the full benefit of the doubt that they are a good person and they are genuinely trying to do good in the world and to positively impact the people and the situations around them. I think that that should be a, a, a mentality that also goes into media. Now, there's a lot of media out there that's been getting a lot of, you know, that there is a debate to be had about whether or not that is its intention and whether or not that is the intention of its creators. But I still want to show up for some of that media. I mean, limited time, you can't be there for all of it. And to try and give it my, my best attempt at enjoying it flatly for just what it is. I'm not always able to do that. Sometimes the negative influences and the, you know, the surreptitious messaging and everything else like that tries to flip just, it's just so blatantly on display that my mind cannot tune it out. And then I start to default back to my presuppositions of what is and is not right and whether or not I agree with that. And I am still human. So things that I disagree with, I tend to view rather dimly. Uh, I try to, again, I try to hear all sides. I try to open my mind to what the other opposing points are. But ultimately, at, this, at one point, you have to remain true to your principles, whatever those are. Not, not so resolutely that you cannot be talked to about them. Every, every principle that you, should have, that you have, you should be able to enter peacefully into a conversation about 
and allow those principles to be challenged vehemently by someone on the other side come to probably no resolution whatsoever and still shake that person's hand in a, gest- in a gesture of kind friendship at the end of it. I think that's how every single human interaction ought to be. That's how all of us should be striving to be. We should not be, you know, just, I'm not trying to get on a soapbox here, but here we are. We should not be fighting against each other over every little thing. Everything, there are some things that, that other people, that people disagree with me on that I believe are genuinely evil, genuinely evil that people could possibly reside on the other side. But I respect their right. I respect their their rationale for being there. I understand why they're there. Or at least I'm trying to as best as I can. I don't agree with them, but I'm trying my best to, to find that bridge and bridge that gap and say, okay, we disagree on this and boy, do we. But that shouldn't stop us from working together. That shouldn't stop us from being a cohesive unit of two people at any given time and still being able to be friends and work together in a positive for the good, not my good or your good, but the common good together. That should there should never be something that causes people to be divided so greatly that they will leave off the working towards the better good. I'm going to leave that where it lies. So no, I don't really have any great expectations at the moment for. Uh, last airbender live adaptation i'm hoping it is good i'm preparing to walk in they're not walk in i'm preparing to sign into netflix when it comes live and go feed it to me and we'll see how how long we get to we get to it um again limited time if it is three episodes in and it's not getting any and it's not good and it's not getting any better i'll probably drop it because you know I have limited time and there are other things I could probably watch that I'd probably enjoy more. Um, but I'm prepared to give it a full, a full honest watch. That seems like the best, the best I can describe it here. Um, yeah. Masters also says I should remind him why he decided to leave quarantine to be surrounded by a large group of children for nine days. And, um, I don't have any reason for that. I, I have no explanation except perhaps that you wanted to chase Disney princesses around, I can't believe you didn't let us do the uh, No Happy Endings Challenge at Disney where we tried to get every single Disney princess we saw to reject us uh, for a offer of a date or something. But, you know, I mean, I think that that would be a noble cause. <laughs> um, yep, uh, I, I think that that uh, I think that that about covers it. I think you should um, definitely consider your actions here. Um, you should really feel guilty for abandoning um, the Mavericks in our hour of need. We, we are trying our best to not kill each other. Some of us are trying harder than others. And I, I, I feel personally slighted that you just abandoned us out here in the cold. And I have so many things I want to yell at you about in terms of saving my character or replacing him or something. But uh, that would be something that you and I will have to discuss another time, Masters, if you watch this, which I don't blame you if you don't. If you do, two times speed. Here we are at the end again. Um, yeah, and I think that this is a good place to end. It's just me. I don't have anyone else to really play off right here. And this is, these are all the topics that were sent to me. Um, so, yeah, if uh, if you all enjoyed this, I, I hope you did. Um, this is kind of like the other things podcast light because it's just me. There's no masters, no one to play off of. Um, so. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope to see you again in the future. Next week, the Other Things Podcast will be back. Me and Master, I think it will be back next week. I hope it will be back next week. Masters, tell me it will be back next week. And um, it will be a good time. I uh, hope, hope to see you all back. Sasquatch, thank you for uh, communicating with us and being a part of this and uh, giving me a terrible topic to talk about. Um, anyone who would like to submit any sort of topics or things for either that or a future Sasquatch Speaks, uh, please leave those in the comments down below or join the Discord and drop them into the podcast topic suggestion channel. Uh, that is where that goes. Um, and I believe that is completely open to the public, so anyone who joins up should be able to do that as well. Um, and yeah, let's uh, just have a good week. This, this, is a, this is a rough time. And if you can at all, 
find a place, find a time, find an opportunity and a person to have one of those open discussions with where you can just talk, not press your point, not, uh, not you know, kowtow to their position, but to just have a conversation and say, we disagree on some things because you disagree on things with absolutely everybody out there. Biologically identical twins have things that they disagree upon with, with their biologically identical twin. And that's, that's how things go. I mean, every single person is different, no matter how closely related or tied to each other they are. So acknowledge that and then, and then move on. Just, just, just let you be you and, and let other people be them as well. But don't cut other people out. Don't, don't put up walls engage that that's what i that's what i would say to, to really focus on this week not that i have any position to be not that i'm in any position to be giving life advice or things like that but it just seems like that's kind of where everything ended up with all that talk um so yeah thank you all for watching i hope you have enjoyed i know i enjoy this to get things off my chest from time to time and getting back into a more podcasting centric mentality helps me to kind of decompress from the week because I have a bunch of things that just get thrown at me all week long. Um, so doing this really helps me out too. So again, even if nobody's watching at this point, except for Sass, because I know he's watching at this point, um, I appreciate you taking the time to, to hear me out and to engage with this and to, and to be a part of what's going on here. Um, so even if I'm the person that you disagree with, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And I hope to see you all next time. Goodbye.